Whisk vigorously while adding the oil in a slow, steady stream. That step is the key to success for what I'm going to show you how to make today. Hi everyone, I'm David Shalik, and it's both a thrill and an honor to be a member of the Chef Instructor team on board the beautiful ships Riviera and Marina at the Culinary Center. I'm a New York, New Yorker, but I live just across the bay from San Francisco. And you know, shelter in place or not, there is always a lot of cooking going on at Shea Daddy. Now, today I want to show you how to make something that I think should be a go-to in everybody's repertoire. It's simple, easy to make, the ingredient list is short, and you know, there's lots of nice tie-ins to travel, there's plenty of opportunity for, for, uh, for variety and options. What am I talking about? French dressing. That's right, we're going to be making French dressing today. But, we won't be making this. Now, we're going to make something different, better, the real thing. We're going to be making Dijon vinaigrette. Now, one of the things that makes this sauce so wonderful is its consistency. It's creamy, and, and it's not too thick, but it has just the perfect viscosity that it coats salads really well over vegetables. You can spoon it on top of cold meats this time of year. Perfect. And, you know, you get to that consistency by doing something what's called an emulsion. Okay, we're going to talk about emulsions today a little bit because that's what we're going to be making. An emulsification, okay, is what happens when you join two emissible solutions together, okay? And we all know that oil and vinegar don't mix, but we're going to blend them and bind them by using an emulsifier, okay? So in order to emulsify, you need to have an emulsifier, and that's why you're gonna be whisking vigorously and adding that oil in a slow stream. Because what happens when you make an emulsion is that as the oil is slowly going into the water-based solution or the vinegar, and why you need to whisk and agitate that liquid really rapidly is because you need to break up that oil as it hits the vinegar and, and smash it into tiny droplets because then the emulsifier can grab it, wrap itself around those droplets, and then attach it to the vinegar or suspend it in the vinegar, and that's how you have your bond, and that's how you get to that nice creamy consistency. Okay, so normally the emulsifier, like right, when you make mayonnaise, hollandaise, uh, aioli, um, barnais sauce, you know, you're using egg yolks, right? And the dressings in the store, you know, those shelves of lots of colors and combinations and things, okay? I have to believe a major proportion of them, maybe all of them, are bound with uh, what's called xanthan gum, right? Xanthan gum's fine, it's natural, it's actually a derivative of sugar. But we're not going to use those today. We're not going to be using egg yolks or xanthan gum because we're going to be using Dijon mustard. Okay, Dijon mustard is a great natural emulsifier. So not only does it taste great, but it's going to help us get to that wonderful creamy consistency that we're after in our dressing. Now what's going to help us be successful when we make our vinaigrette is to have the right wares. Okay, what's really important is to have the right whisk and the right bowl. Those two things need to be in harmony with each other in order to help the emulsion be successful, okay? And also a little less work and it'll be much more efficient, okay? So, small whisk, large bowl. That's not really gonna work out very well, okay? Large whisk, small bowl. Oh, those, that dressing's gonna go everywhere when you make it. That doesn't work, okay? But, you know, like, here's my, here's my go-to bowl when I make this and my go-to whisk, okay? And it works out beautifully. Now, I'm going to make the dressing today in a glass bowl just to help you know show you what's happening when we start making it. But as you can see, I've, and I made a test batch before, this whisk and this bowl are working beautifully together. Now one of the things you say to yourself, yeah, you want me to whisk vigorously and add the oil and it's gonna move all over the place and it's gonna have this. Well that doesn't really work, does it? Nah, that adds to a little bit of a kitchen mayhem. So let me show you a little trick that we like to use, uh, I remember a lot in restaurant kitchens, when we're making dressings and sauces and things, is you take a kitchen towel or a tea towel, get it nice and wet, wring out the excess water, roll it up, and then just wrap it around the bowl, right on the countertop, and just cinch it together, snug but not too tight, okay? And now you have a third hand. Now we're in good shape. So today, for our dressing, we're going to be using uh, some shallot, okay? A little shallot, or I'll give you a back door, you know, a little break. Plan B, we can use red onion. Sea salt, and we like to use fine sea salt, okay? Freshly cracked black pepper, red wine vinegar, and you know, you wanna find a red wine vinegar or a wine vinegar that's not too strong, not too acidic. It's too bad that they don't 
say on the label what grain the, uh, the, the vinegar is because the higher the grain, the more acidic it is. But I have found generally the red wine vinegars from Italy are a little, a little tamer. They're a little less acidic. So that might be something worthy of looking for. And of course, our Dijon mustard, right? Now, go for quality, you know? I mean, it's good Dijon mustard. It's just one of those things, you know, that I feel are a must, a mustard <laughs> in the refrigerator. Um, there's nice ones available. I was in the store the other day. I'd never seen this. This was kind of cool, cool looking jar. The name was a little curious to me. So I looked on the back and, oh my God, it's from Italy. I love that. In Italian, Dijon mustard. However, when I look at the top and the top label, it says the house was founded in 1825 in Bordeaux. Now I'm liking that line from Italy to Bordeaux. But speaking of Bordeaux, when you're there, you know, we have a great stop when, when you're on a cruise through the, uh, the, the French Atlantic and you go to Bordeaux, a wonderful two and a half day rest there. You know, the ships park like right downtown in the center of the city. It's such a wonderful place to go. And when you're in the city and you go there on one of the main uh, pedestrian only boulevards, there's a mustard store and you can get yourself wonderful crocks of mustard. They have the big vats in the store and you can choose the champagne mustard or the red wine mustard or various herbal ones and this like that. And they'll pump some into the jar for you. This is such a great thing to bring home. Make sure you put it in your check bag, okay? But when you bring it home and every time you use it, are you gonna think about that day in Bordeaux? I know, I'm thinking about it right now. You know, it gets a little upsetting when the jar is empty. Time to go back on another trip. But that's a nice thing to get, okay? So, salt, pepper, shallot or onion, vinegar, Dijon mustard. Those are the base ingredients, our water-based part of our emulsion. Okay, so first thing, shallot, you know, uh, minced shallot, obligatory. However, I'll give you a break, okay? We won't use shallot today. We'll use a little red onion. And what you can do, because I only need about, you know, for this I'm going to make about a third, half of a cup of dressing is maybe a tablespoon of uh, minced shallot or red onion. So just take the tip of a paring knife or a small knife and just score right through that outer layer of the onion. And you have a piece that should yield me, you know what I need. So, long thin slices, because we're going to mince, so no more than a sixteenth of an inch, please, okay? Roll your knife through, work down to the very end, right? Turn everything 90 degrees, and then you start to mince, okay? And just run your knife all the way down again. Try to keep it around 16th of an inch thick. That's a nice mince, emulsé. say. And uh, yeah, that looks good. That's that tablespoon that I'm after. Okay, in the bowl. Then we're going to uh, put a pinch of salt in at the beginning. You can always add salt later. Plus, I know that there's salt in the uh, in the mustard. So, in terms of freshly cracked black pepper, you know, peppercorns are a nice thing to bring home from other places. You know, it's interesting. Uh, red wine vinegar, tablespoon. Make sure I coat all that onion. A little more than a tablespoon. More or less for dressings and for this, plan on three to four parts oil to one part of vinegar, okay, more or less, but that's gonna have some variation to it because it depends on the strength of the mustard, the strength and or the age of the vinegar, okay, and the type of vinegar that you're using, okay? So I have salt, pepper, onion or shallot, red wine vinegar, and our mustard, okay? I'm gonna use a nice amount, a little more than a tablespoon. Okay, perfect. Now, what we want to do is give this a simple mix. Let all those ingredients combine for a little while, five, 10 minutes normally, just enough to soften the onion up a little bit. Okay, and while that's doing that, I want to talk about the oil. Okay, I didn't talk about that yet. Canola oil, grapeseed oil, peanut oil, great neutral oils to use for dressings and marinades, things like that. Um, I generally hedge away from extra virgin olive oil for this because a nice extra virgin olive oil has so much going for it that when it gets mixed and diluted with the other ingredients, it kind of takes away a little bit from what the olive oil, the extra virgin olive oil has to offer. However, that said, if you like a little bit of that flavor, you use the olive oil um, as a seasoning. So start with your salad oil and then finish with just maybe a tablespoon or so of the extra virgin olive oil. 
But I like to use sunflowers, sunflower seed oil, okay? And the easy reason why I like to use it, aside from the fact that it doesn't have a lot of smell, doesn't have a lot of flavor, it's great in dressings, wonderful for high heat cooking, is that every time I see something like this, I'm thinking about those fields in Tuscany. You know, when you stop in Livorno and go into Tuscany around June, July, you see the fields of sunflowers or through the Black Sea. I remember one time we stopped in Romania and I took one of the shore excursions into a federal park about an hour um, from the port. And it wasn't long and we were in the fields. We must have been in sunflower production zone of Romania because all around us, as far as the eye could see, green, yellow, blue. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen, you know. So when I see that, I'm thinking about those places. So that's a pretty good reason to stick to uh, using sunflower oil, sunflower seed oil. Okay, we are now going to whisk and we're going to start adding our oil, uh, our sunflower oil or our grapeseed oil. Slowly, salad oil, slowly, a little bit at a time, drops, drops. I'm grabbing those drops with the whisk as the oil hits the vinegar and mustard. Because as I said, this needs to be dispersed. We're making an emulsion. Whisking, whisking, whisking. Now we're gonna get a little more aggressive. Whisking vigorously, really grabbing that oil and making our emulsion. And you'll know pretty quickly whether you're successful or not because if it's starting to curdle up or be broken, you have to stop and start all over again. And I'll tell you how to fix that in a moment. So I'm just gonna whisk this oil, whisk this oil as it's hitting the vinegar, whisk, 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 and make the dressing. As you get to that nice place where your dressing is done, I'm gonna do a little taste to make sure. Oh, that's nice. But as you can see, look how creamy that is. Beautiful, okay? That is your Dijon vinaigrette. Now, I'm gonna show you the variety of ways you can use it. All right, as promised, if this breaks when you're making it, real easy to fix. Get yourself another bowl, put some mustard in the bowl, and then add this dressing, the broken dressing to it, the same way you added the oil, and it will come right back, okay? So you don't have to waste this. You may end up with a dressing with a little more mustard flavor than you were originally intending, but you didn't lose it, okay? Um, the other thing is, if it's a little thick, just have some lukewarm water as you're at, you know, in your process, in the, in the step while you're adding the oil. Just stop, and every so often, you can add, you know, a half teaspoon, a teaspoon of lukewarm water, and then it'll thin it down. You can carry on with adding the oil, but it also becomes nice and spoonable, okay? Now, the dressing will last in the refrigerator a couple of days, maybe at the most, but this is something you really want to make, you know, when you need it, okay? It's best when everything is fresh and it's freshly made. Okay, uses. Well, we can do a lot with this. First, we're gonna start with our salad laitue, or basic, you know, simple lettuce salad. And instead of adding the dressing to the salad, I'm, or the greens, I'm gonna add the greens to the dressing, okay? This is a nice little trick, and it really helps you to coat your leaves a little more evenly, right? So, put the dressing in the bowl, I'll tell you, in Provence, if you have a, uh, like a wood, um, a wood salad bowl, what I've seen is that they take, a, before they add the dressing, they take a garlic clove and rub the garlic clove, crushed like a little bit of garlic all over the wood, and then they add the dressing, and it just kind of gives you that little bit of garlic flavor. Uh, anyway, okay, so you have it like that. Now you can add your salad greens, your Boston lettuce, your bib lettuce, your butter lettuce, I love this. I love Boston or bib lettuce, it's fantastic. And then you can just do a gentle dental toss. Very easy, don't wanna break the leaves, don't wanna bruise them. Nice gentle toss. Look at that, nice, huh? Beautiful. There's something to be said for the well-dressed dress, uh, well salad. All right. Now, what you can do is if you want to go that, go a little extra fancy, as you can with clean hands, and you know this is the day for this, but with clean hands, you can start with the, and this is what I do this at home all the time, um, start with the large leaves, 
on the bottom, and you're basically going to build the head of lettuce back together again, okay? So start with the large ones, mediums, okay? Finish with the small. How gorgeous is that? It's almost like a flower. Absolutely wonderful. Here, put that one in there. Right on top. Okay. Nice, right? And then, if you see these in an open air market, farmer's market, if you have access to chai blossoms or garlic chai blossoms, these are wonderful. And you could just, or any edible flower, just break them off and sprinkle them on top. That's really nice. Nice flavor, beautiful colors, fresh, clean, good for you. Let them drop all over. I mean, that's your garnish. Right? That's really a couple more. Really lovely. Okay, cool. There's your salad. Simple salad. Salad lechu. Okay, next thing you can use these for, this dressing for, is a side dish. How about some French tea? Green beans, you know, nice side dish for summertime, right? To get your green beans like this, thinly sliced, you do not have to slice them lengthwise one by one. You get yourself the French green bean tool, okay? And this thing's pretty cool, I love this. It's got a bunch of blades inside here. And what you do is with your green beans, when they're raw, is just trim the stem side off of them, and then you just push the bean right through, and then you get your French bean, okay? Cook these in well-salted boiling water, in batches, okay, skim them out, let them rest, okay, and then you have your French green beans, okay? So that's real nice, handy trick, nice tool to have. All right, a little bit of dressing. This, you can just drizzle this on top. And maybe if you want, you can add some uh, chopped, um, roughly chopped uh, almonds. Beautiful, these are Marcona almonds. You can bring these home from Spain. Half the price in Barcelona, right? And that's a fantastic, fantastic side dish, okay? And lastly, another thing you can do with this, so tis the season, right? Sliced tomatoes. Okay, nice, beautiful, vine-ripened tomatoes, okay? I like to add, a little bit of uh, flaky salt to them, just a touch. You know, there's salt in the dressing, but the tomatoes need it, okay? Then you can add your dressing on top. Smear it all over those, ooh, that looks good. Okay, and then add maybe a little uh, crumbled uh, chef, goat cheese. Okay, right on top, just a little bit. All right, on each tomato, this could be feta. Okay, lovely. All right, a piece there, that goes there. Okay, and then at the end, you can have some fresh mint leaves. Grab some mint leaves. Maybe wrap them inside a couple of basil leaves. So you have the basil and mint thing happening. All right? And wrap the smaller leaves inside the larger leaves. Roll them up tight. Give them a slice. You know, shy quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. Maybe cut crosswise a couple few times. There's your chopped herbs, mint and basil. Sprinkle that on top. Oh yeah, lovely. And you have the, um, the salad tomate that you may find on the menu when you're in Saint Tropez at Club 55. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so what I like to say is when you use quality ingredients, stick to basic techniques and keep it simple, you will make great things to eat. I'm David Shalek. Thanks for watching, and I am looking forward to seeing you on board the beautiful ships Riviera and Marina at the Culinary Center.